In the beginning, in the land of the rising sun, before there were four, there was only one. Kawasaki has been around for 140 years. When we say Kawasaki, we think of motorcycles, yeah? Where in fact, this company is part of a bigger organization involved in the manufacturing of trains, planes, tankers, industrial robots, and spacecrafts. The whole picture is called Kawasaki Heavy Industries. The year 1878, the company was founded by Shozo Kawasaki in Nagasaki. It was all shipping for this aggressive entrepreneur up until the early 1900s, where he started to get into locomotives and train cars. He became known for really good quality. His products, they were coming out better than the imports. By the 1920s, they started building planes and was the first company to build metal aircrafts for the Japanese military. After that, they made the first unmanned robots, which changed the game in assembly line manufacturing. In the 1960s, they acquired the Meguro Motorcycle Company which actually for a time became number one in Japan. They somehow dropped the ball on that one and Kawasaki came in and bought them out. They started to build the K model motorcycles, a licensed copy of the iconic BSA. It was known as the K1 and by 1966, they made the W1, which is the granddaddy of all W series bikes. Through the years, this has become a staple for Kawasaki coming in and out of the past decades. This series is very important for them because this is a reminder of Kawasaki's roots as a motorcycle brand. I've been to Japan many times, but this is the first time I'll be going out in the countryside on a motorcycle. This on a very comfy bike from Kawasaki. And we're off. Mr. J. Taruk. Makina. <laughs> Forever partner, right, PH? We're in Japan. So far, this is Tokyo, and we're going to a place called. Uh, what is that? Uh, is it? <laughs> I don't know where we're going, but uh, we're very excited. There's a new bike from Kawasaki that we are going to ride. I'm excited to ride with Jay again. That's my Mitch. This is a four hour drive. We're gonna have lunch somewhere. Papa to me book on Fuso. Stopover that we're doing here right now. Some of the Japanese. Yeah. Arigato gozaimasu. I'm no stranger to the W800 as I featured the previous model last year. I enjoyed that bike. In fact, I enjoyed it so much I ended up buying its smaller brother, the W250. But that's another story. So when I got the invite to ride it again this time in Japan, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I didn't come close to Your fingers what? I was just telling you what a race I crashed in and I tore all the, the ligaments out of my thing, out of my hand. What? So when I pulled my glove off, my finger just collapsed and I couldn't move them. I had to have them okay. stabilized for uh, eight weeks without moving them. Okay. <laughs> That's like a great topic here at the start of a ride. <laughs> okay, well I'm glad you're, you're alright man. Yeah, thank you. You ride in front of me, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna be diving into corners on you. We rode a total of about 300 kilometers in two days. So at this point, we're doing like a little warm up. We're trying to get used to the motorcycle first. Brakes already, I'm telling you right now. Very responsive, look. And we're off. We're in Japan, left side, remember. We rode through nice twisties at a relaxed pace with a bit of spurts in the highway. Oh my gosh, Japan is beautiful! Wow! Riding in Japan is awesome. Perfect weather, no kamotes, just you, the bike, and freedom. In 2019, we have two models, the cafe and the street. We're in Chino Nagano in beautiful Japan. I mean, look at this place, really nice mountainous area. One of the best places in Japan 
to ride. Let's take a look at the new W800. That's the street right over there, and this is the cafe racer version, obviously. The handlebars are different, you got a cowl going over there. I'm gonna be talking more on the differences between the old W800, which came out a few years ago, and this new W800. First off, the chassis. Kawasaki decided, let's not just, you know, do a facelift. They decided to reinforce the chassis to make it even more stiff. So that's a good thing. Of course, the seat. Between the two, you'll see the difference between the seat. Aha! Disc brake at the rear. That used to be drum with the older W800. It's ABS. Dual channel ABS. ABS front, ABS rear. If you caught my W800 feature before, you will remember that I said it's basically with the old engine that they upgraded with fuel injection and all of that. They made it even more modern now with the addition of ABS. So that thing's a cool thing. It will still maintain its classic roots, its heritage. You won't have any modes here or any of the sort. It's still gonna be a rough and gruff type of bike. Engine between the two, it's the same basically. Although you might feel that this is like more powerful or has better acceleration, I think it's just because of the change in riding position because it has a more aggressive stance it has a sportier stance so it's all in the mind it feels like you're going faster with a cafe racer but it's really the same engine I mean performance wise power output wise it, it's supposed to be the same handling though the handlebars what's going on here is this whole club and setup just totally changed the game in handling you're gonna be hugging the corners more with this one that's how I felt the handlebars are narrower your hands are basically gonna be closer to each other it's gonna have a better response but uh, it's gonna be slightly heavier as opposed to the street version when you got more leverage because the handlebars are wider. Headlight for both is pretty much the same except for the cowl of course. So I think this is super what they did with the W800. I'm a big fan with the old one. Now with an upgrade like this back home this one costs I think 490,000. This one costs 530,000. So with all the upgrades compared with the older W800 if you have the old W800 keep it. I'm not saying you should all just let go of your old W800s and sell all of those and buy these. I think you can still keep those, but if you're in the market for W800, go for the new ones already, right? Now, if I may suggest an aftermarket option for the Cafe Racer, I would say if they can come up with a rear set for the pegs, because your stance here is already on the sporty side, I think more people will appreciate if the rear pegs will go to the rear just a little bit more, maybe up to there or something, just so that you can have an even more aggressive feel and you won't have to be too scrunched up with your abs. Like the previous W800, the bike was smooth, responsive, in a nice, gentle sort of way, with a weight distribution on the mid-high tier. Handling partnered with reliable tires will have you being more confident in the corners, especially with a cafe. The seating position is all for hugging and curves tight. Between the two, I prefer the cafe hands down. It's what makes it unique and what sets it apart from the others. It's an off-the-shelf racer that I can use without much thought for any mods, save for maybe the muffler and a paint job. The ABS will also up the ante in terms of confidence in riding a two-wheeled machine coming from a classic template. In terms of balance from front and back, I I did feel some front tire wobble when I hit around 165 to 170 kph. This was with the W800 Street. I wasn't sure if it was a one-off, it could be anything. Tire pressure, tire balancing. Generally, it's an issue that can be addressed by a steering damper. Speaking of which, the original W1 had one. And the good old folks in Kawasaki let us try this bike from the past, preserved and maintained in all its rig glory. What a treat. I'm sure everybody's excited to ride it. Just don't drop it. It's gonna piss off Kawasaki. On to VX ring, rear brake, and then change pedal exit. Opposite, changing on your right and the braking left. Why the right side? Before, there's no standard. So, some back here, some back here. Last brake, last brake. Clutch is very heavy. Oh, very heavy. Alright, this is exciting stuff here. 1965 cambio on the right side that's the brakes gotta remember that wow This 
whole trip was not just a simple ride and romp in Japan's countryside. No, Kawasaki made us taste culture and heritage in a compact four-day retreat to marry this experience to what the W Series is for Kawasaki. Wow, what, what's this temple called, sir? Uh, Kitanuki Kano. Kitanuki Kano. Yes. Ah. Born the... Kitanuki Kano. 1200 years ago. What? 1200 years old, folks. Look at that. Hi. This is so awesome. Way to go, Kawasaki. Riding the all-new upgraded W800 is like having one foot in the past and your throttle hand in the future. It's literally experiencing a bit of both eras at the same time. The W800 will showcase more of the older feel of classic bikes as opposed to other motorcycles nowadays that look old but feel new and modern and shiny. If you were familiar with vintage bikes, you'll know what I'm talking about. The past is here in the present with this bike. Kawasaki takes the W Series very seriously as this represents their early steps in motorcycle manufacturing. So much history, so many stories behind the series. Kawasaki really has nothing to prove, but you know, if there's any more respect to be given, then hats off to the oldest Japanese motorcycle brand for looking back at their past while heading for the future with this fine bike. This is Zach from Makinamoto Features. Ciao! ありがとうございます。ありがとう。味の素。味の素。味の素。キッコーマン。キッコーマン。やばいやばい。<笑><笑>